I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Cerberus. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to yet another episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty, right here on Missile Dine Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect, Mass Effect, Mass, Mass Effect 2 video. Uh, <laughs> a huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres, and even bigger shout, bigger shout out. <laughs> I can't talk at all. <laughs> What's going on? Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to yet another episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty right here on Missile Dine Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2 video, and I really hope I kept the original intro in because, gosh darn, that was bad. Uh, huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres of these episodes, and an even bigger shout out to those of you supporting the channel over on Patreon.com slash Missile Dine Online. Would not be able to do this without you, so thank you guys very much very much and also for coming to my streams uh you're just the best in the last episode it was quite a doozy we recruited the convict jack the most powerful human biotic known to man and in this episode we are going to an absolutely mandatory story planet named horizon because as we're about to find out it's about to be attacked by the collectors themselves and remember that's the whole point of this game the collectors are working with the reapers and we need to stop them. At least we think they're working with the Reapers. So we are a level 13 Vanguard Miss Corey Shepard here, Commander Corey Shepard, uh, with four squad points that we're not going to spend because we're going to save them for later. Also, you will notice that Flashbang Grenade is my uh, bonus power that I have here. And I highly, highly recommend that you maybe use the same because it is so powerful on the planet we're about to go to. The elusive man wishes to speak to you in the debriefing room, Commander. Absolutely he does, Kelly, and this is kind of the end of Act 1 of Mass Effect 2. After you've recruited Grunt, Jack, Morden, and Garrus, you are forced into this mission. And that, my friends, it is because if we go to use the galaxy map... Change of plans, Commander. Urgent message coming in from the elusive man. Patch him in through the comm room. What'd I tell you? Now, there are some researches, research, research, uh, some research that I did uh, that is going to be incredibly useful for this mission. I highly recommend getting it. Is the shotgun shield piercing or whatever your gun of choice is uh, shield piercing. This does 50% damage, uh, more damage against shields and biotic barriers. And also, I got the redundant field generator. Basically, sometimes Shepard's shield will come back randomly. And then also the most important weapon is this heavy weapon, the M920 Cane, which is basically a mini nuke that we get to take to us to Horizon, which is um, just the coolest thing in the world. So we need to head to the comm room here. We need to check in with the elusive man and uh, see what's going on on Horizon. Shepard, I think we have them. Horizon, one of our colonies in the Terminus systems, just went silent. If it isn't under attack, it soon will be. Has Morden delivered the countermeasure for the Seeker Swarms? Not yet. Let's hope he works well under pressure. There's something else you should know. One of your former crew, Caden Alenko, is stationed on Horizon. What? That will be either Ashley Williams or Caden Alenko, whoever your survivor of Vermeer is. And what is he doing on Horizon? Last I knew, Caden was Alliance. Why is he out in the Terminus systems? Officially, it's an outreach program to improve Alliance relation with the colonies. But they're up to something. And if they sent Commander Alenko, it must be big. I suggest you take it up with him. And that simply can't be a coincidence. The Collectors just happened to pick a colony with one of my former crew. I don't buy it. It shouldn't be a surprise the Collectors are interested in you, especially if they're working for the Reapers. They might be going after him to get to you. You know, there's always something about the Elusive Man that you shouldn't trust and I wouldn't trust. Something's going on here. We should notify the Alliance. We should send a message to the Citadel. 
The Alliance can give us reinforcements. Not until you investigate. I don't want the Alliance getting in our way. Once you have the situation under control, I'll send the message personally. Huh. Well, it doesn't really give us another option, so... I guess we better do this and save Horizon. Send the coordinates. We'll head straight there. This is the most warning we've ever had, Shepard. Good luck. Joker, set a course for Horizon. I've got to go see the Professor. Aye, aye, Commander. Tell me you have something. Yes. Morden coming in clutch. Lilith, we've got a problem. Still can't calibrate the targeting matrix? Those defense towers are useless if we don't figure it out. Sorry, Commander. Getting our comm systems back online takes priority. Yeah. Okay. Surprised people haven't tried to blame that one on me, too. People out here don't trust the Alliance. It's nothing personal. What is that? Get everyone to the safe house. I'll cover you! Run! Control. What an absolutely disgusting scene. Imagine having all of those little seeker swarm bugs crawling all over you as you're paralyzed, but you're still able to see everything that's happening around you. The collectors are monsters and apparently seem to be like some type of hive mind where there's a leader that can actually assume direct control of any of its drones. We're going to be dealing a lot with that, which is why I recommend bringing Kasu why I recommend bringing flashbang grenade because it's really useful. If you don't have it for yourself, then yes, I would highly recommend bringing Kasumi because her flashbang grenade is going to shut down a lot of the biotic abilities that we're going to be seeing throughout this mission on Horizon. Now, 
Uh, this is one of those missions where Morden would be incredibly useful. He has some unique dialogue. His incinerate ability is so good on Horizon. However, we're going to take Garrus. And one of the reasons why we're going to take Garrus is because this is Kaden Alenko. This is a survivor from Vermeer. This is a person that fought alongside Garrus throughout Mass Effect 1. Uh, it just makes sense that Garrus would be here to, to say hello and hopefully uh, get Caden or Ashley back onto our squad and help us protect the human race from the collectors. And of course, Miranda. And actually a lot of the reason for Miranda is sure she has some dialogue. It's important for her to see what the collectors are doing considering she's our second in command, but also she has the ability warp, which is incredibly useful against enemies that have biotic barriers. In fact, there's even a trophy that we can get called warp specialist by warping off the barriers of most enemies. Uh, I think it's 25 enemies and we get that trophy. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to put those po three points into warp because we're going to want that. Even though we really want for Cerberus leader, it's very good. As for our man Garrus here, we're going to wait so that we can put points into his Turian Renegade ability. And for Shepard, we're going to need to make sure that we bring the cane with us. It is going to be far and away the most effective heavy weapon for a few different situations that we're going to get into here on Horizon. So let's land. Shepard has seen that ship before. It's uh, the ship that destroyed the first Normandy and spaced her, ultimately killing her. Very similar ship. So, we find ourselves on Horizon. We're ground side. Morden, you sure those armor upgrades will protect us from the Seeker Swarms? Certainty impossible, but in limited numbers should confuse detection make us invisible to swarms. In theory. In theory? That sounds promising. Experimental technology. Only test is contact with Seeker Swarms. Look forward to seeing if you survive. You know what? Same. Let's go ahead and put incendiary ammo in our shotgun. Hope that these Seeker Swarms don't catch us. And yeah, it looks like we're all good. But we're immediately going to be put into a battle against collectors for the very first time. Enemies that we have never encountered before. Here they are. We're going to go ahead right out of the gate. Go ahead and pop that collector. That, uh collector guardian that has barrier on it first time i believe that we're actually seeing the barrier protection go ahead and warp its shield off giving us one towards that um uh towards that achievement now we're gonna go ahead and charge here we're gonna play kind of aggressive on horizon because we can't guardians are enemies that you want to take out they'll actually put shields down similar to the enemies that you can find in um go ahead and pop that Similar to the enemies that you can find in uh, Mass Effect 1, the Geth that put a shield down in front of them, Guardians do a very similar thing. And the drones kind of fight like your normal soldiers, soldiers, just that they have the... Uh... We're going to go ahead and pop that. These are assassins. These assassins will actually channel a beam at you, and that beam does more damage the more it, it attacks you, and honestly, they get to use it all the time. But we'll go ahead and we'll finish these guys off, no problem. Other drones back here. We'll go ahead and warp them just to kill them. And charge to get our shields back. There we go. That's done. Then we can grab these power cells for 100 credits. Are you still alive? What are you doing? <laughs> so one of my teammates was like, no. I'm pretty sure that was I'm pretty sure that was Miranda. So we can grab those power cells there, maybe fill up on some ammo, and hack this data pad for some money. 6,000 credits, in fact, which is honestly no joke. That's a lot of money. And you'll see that because we also got a hacking um, uh, uh, research, it lasts double the amount of time, meaning that I no longer have to stress out during this playthrough, and I can just, I can just like take a nap and do those. We'll see, we're seeing these Seeker Swarms still all over. You'll see them kind of show up on camera. The collectors are disrupting communications. We're on our own now. 
which i mean maybe that's for the best it's not like they have protection from the seeker swarms and as we proceed over here we're going to be dealing with even more enemies not only collectors but also cuss as well which you can see in the distance over there that are going to be charging us we're going to go ahead and hit this barrier or this uh assassin as soon as we can the reason for that is because those guys can actually really mess up your day go ahead and hit the guardian remember guardians have the shield so we want to take those out and we want to make sure that we're watching these husks as well that we don't kind of allow them to proceed too close to us luckily we are a vanguard and i do think that vanguards are uniquely situated to deal with husks in a, in a lot of easy ways once the armor is removed on a husk in mass effect 2 if you charge it and it its feet leave the ground it dies that's it it immediately is dead once its feet hit the ground which you'll see happen over and over and over throughout mass effect 2 but this is the first time that we're actually dealing with pus in mass effect 2. also i want to point out that using warp is going to be incredibly useful uh and we want to make a habit of using it on all of the enemies just so that we can uh get rid of that trophy and get that done with as soon as possible. I thought the Geth got that technology from Sovereign. The elusive man was correct. The Collectors are agents of the Reapers. And I guess that confirms what we were talking about earlier in the episode. Probably not for the best. Anyways, we can head into here and find another data pad that we can access for 4,200 credits, which you absolutely love to see. And that's all we can find over here. However, there's more items and more things that we can find up this way including if we examine this dead collector we'll be able to find heavy skin weave which is going to be pretty good it's going to increase our total health up here we can find the dead body of a husk these things used to be human this what's left of the colonists no on eden prime victims were turned into husks by impaling them on spikes we haven't seen any the collectors must have brought the husks they're taking the colonists alive for something else. These aren't the same creatures I fought on Eden Prime. They're more advanced, evolved. They still die if you shoot them. They do, but Garrus, you should know plenty about the Husks. We fought a lot of them together. Collectors must be experimenting on the colonists. What are they up to? Maybe it's better not to know the details. The only way to find out is to stop them. Good. Then, for some Paragon points, and for the reason why we're even playing this darn game, let's save the colonist. The collectors aren't getting away with more victims. Let's move out. Yes, ma'am. Get right to it. Get those free Paragon points. And we're going to proceed over here. But first, we got to get this thermal clip because it's about to be incredibly useful. All these empty buildings. It's unsettling. Just like Freedom's Progress. The entire colony see these pods here looks like this is actually where they put humans now you'll hear garris yell out that there's enemies and there is one that's just kind of hanging out over there but that's a drone we don't care about drones what we want to get ready to attack is this right here this guardian which we can go ahead and hit and then concussive shot and hopefully hit this assassin as well which we weren't able to do but we can warp its shields go ahead and grab this thermal clip as well and then watch out for that drone that we saw it actually won't come in here this is a pretty safe area to sit in go ahead and finish off that guardian and this drone as well this is why the geth plasma shotgun is so useful is for is really for areas like this where we can just go ahead do this finish that assassin off that drone should still be alive which we can go ahead and melee to death there we go perfect and these guys are actually fighting off enemies that we can't see but they're over here including this drop up oh, we'll go ahead and charge this guy and then go ahead and melee him off then we're going to be dealing with even more enemies over here. We're going to go ahead and get into cover. We'll go ahead and concussive shot them just to get them off his feet. Get back down here and warp. Hopefully warp this. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and reload. Make sure we're good to go. We're going to charge this drone because we can immediately back up into cover here. Pop that explosive. Let's go ahead and hit that one. And then we can charge back in. Hopefully, whoop, you know what, I'm just going to melee you. There you go. <laughs> because I can. Because I am Commander Corey Shepard. Anyways, now that we, those are all dead, we can come back to where we were. We took care of the enemies that were in this section, and we can bypass this wall safe here. 
And there we go. 4,800 credits is ours. You'd love to see it. I love how there's just wall safes that, you know, a good thing the collectors don't want to steal anything. Anyways, we also want to come down where uh, the drone was when we first came in because we can actually get a free 100 credits or a metagel if you used one from this med kit here. That's all that we can get in this room, uh, but thought that, you know, hey, 100 credits is 100 credits and it all adds up eventually, let me tell you, because credits are very finite in Mass Effect 2. So, uh, sort of. And then we're gonna head, there is, there is ways to cheese it, don't you worry. We're gonna head this way where we just took down the rest of these. We could get that thermal clip, which doesn't sound like a bad idea, but we also can grab one right there. And then I don't believe there's anything that we can actually get in this room except for more thermal clips, which means that we only have one way to go, which is, can I, won't let me hop? I thought I could hop that. Anyways, the point is, uh, I don't know where I'm going. What game is this? Let's head this way around. And we're actually going to get ready for one hecka of a fight over here. We can check out this, for the first time, stasis colonist. Seems to be some kind of stasis field. Keeps you conscious, but completely helpless. They've been like this a long time. Hasn't been that long, Shep. Hasn't been that long. We'll also notice that there's more up here as well that we can see. Even more up here. Really stinks for these guys. And finally, a computer that we can go ahead and hack. Which we can get a bunch of credits for. 3,000. 3,000 credits are ours. Which, hey... You know what? I'll take it. Um, I also accidentally hit a button while I was staring at that. So keep in mind that this room's up here because it could potentially be useful, especially if you're a sniper. In fact, you know, I got to say, if you play an infiltrator in this game, uh, infiltrator is so incredibly powerful. So as we come over here, we'll see that there's a particle beam that we can grab. I actually would not recommend grabbing that just yet. Over here, we can see that there's more stasis uh, colonist. And as we proceed forward even more, this guy was trying to hide, and unfortunately for him, it did not end well. It looks like he was sasist regardless. So we're going to go ahead and use this door. Uh, we're actually not going to use this one because it's going to put us in a funky position. We're going to go ahead, and for the first time ever, we're going to switch to the M920 cane, which, by the way, you could have taken on the last mission, and it would have done very well. But we're going to get ready. As we proceed forward, we're going to have to deal with something new. I am assuming direct control. And we get to fight for the first time ever a collector general known as Harbinger, an enemy that can take control of any drone that you see. So we're going to go ahead and charge up the M920 cane and say, uh, what was that? I'm sorry, assuming direct control of what? Uh, dead? You're dead? Is that what you were assuming direct control of? We're gonna go ahead and charge this assassin, go ahead and immediately warp it, and take it down, and then finish these off. As soon as you kill that first wave of enemies, you're gonna deal with another wave, and that's not it. You're not done after that. Go ahead and stun that, since I missed with my, uh, with my shotgun, since I'm terrible at this game. And we're gonna get ready for yet more enemies to pop in, including drones that Harbinger, like I said, can take over at any point. We're gonna go ahead and warp. Remember, you kinda wanna soften these enemies up just a little bit before you destroy them, because you want that barrier to, to, to kill them, or at least not to kill them, but to remove the... Uh, and as I say that, Carbinger is now going to take effect of the last Guardian that was here, which is now a Harbinger enemy. It's going to hit us with the enemy, the fire that you just saw, and then it's also going to hit us with a Singularity. However, if you are able to use uh, a flash grenade on it, which I'm going to go ahead and just show you, it will stop. It will stop doing anything, and it will just sit there. And that's it. Harbinger, completely useless. Doesn't do anything. Flashbang grenade, so OP. Stops guns from working, stops biotics, stops tech abilities. Incredibly strong uh, at just uh, shutting down something like Harbinger. So what I like to do when I'm on Horizon is I like to uh, just keep Harbinger alive. I don't like to kill him. I like to flashbang him and then just kill everything else around him. Now we have another one of those particle beams over here that's worth getting. And before we do that, uh, I just want to point out that anytime you collect a heavy weapon, the ammo of your heavy weapon instantly recharges. So if we come back over here, it doesn't matter which one you take. You can take whichever one, but we're go we'll go ahead and we'll grab this one. That will 
actually now be a maxed out 725 ammo collector beam, which is a very, very strong single target, basically attack that will burn through armor, biotic barriers, anything like that absolutely shreds through them. Uh, so very useful if you're fighting one enemy. The cane is very good at taking out entire groups of enemies. And then I also wanted to point out this little area over here, which if we come in here, there's actually a computer that we can access for more credits. Now that everything's dead, we can go ahead and grab that for 3000. And there's nothing up here, but I do want to point out that up on these stairs is a really good vantage point if you're a sniper. Those enemies spawn in, you come up here, and you just kind of snipe them all out. You get full full field view. It's a very, very good spot to fight. Um, in fact, if you don't use the M920 cane here, which there's no reason not to, to be totally honest with you, it, it just eliminates the first wave of enemies. You get an instant refill on all of your heavy we weapon ammo right here anyways um so i wouldn't i wouldn't stress too hard now i shouldn't have used this weapon the collector beam but i wanted to show it to you because there's actually power cells that we can get right here there was no reason uh that that shouldn't have been that should have just been 100 credits it doesn't matter it's 100 credits but still um once you grab one of those power beams the other one will just straight up disappear so now we need to go ahead and head to the final area that we can which is this door here let's go ahead and bypass it and it seems that somebody may have locked themselves in this garage. Company, get out here now. You're, you're human. What are you doing out here? You leave them right here. You had to hear them trying to get in. Seems like it's hard to hide from the collectors. Those things are collectors? You mean, they're real? I thought they were just made up, you know, propaganda to keep us in Alliance space. No, oh, they got Lilith. I, I saw her go down. Sten, too. They, they got damn near everybody. You know, I don't... What did, what did you think they were, dude? Anyways, who are you? What's your name? What do you do here? Name's Delan. Mechanic. I came down to check on the main grid after we lost our comm signals. And I heard screaming. I looked outside and there were swarms of bugs. Everyone they touched just froze. I, I, I sealed the doors. Damn it, it's the Alliance's fault. They stationed that Commander Alenko here and built those defense towers. It made us a target. Uh, wait, what defense towers? Tell me about the colony defense towers. A gift from the Alliance. High-powered Guardian lasers. Supposed to keep hostile ships from landing near the colony. Had to build a massive underground generator just to give it enough juice. Only we couldn't get the targeting systems online. So the Alliance gave us a giant gun that couldn't shoot straight. Stupid sons of bitches. That doesn't seem right. Something seems a little wrong there. Let's... Why, why blame the Alliance? Why do you think this is the Alliance's fault? We're just a small colony. Nobody bothered us before we started building those damn defense towers and drew attention to ourselves. I left Council Space to get away from the Alliance. Nothing good ever comes from getting mixed up with them. The Collectors are targeting remote colonies. The Alliance was trying to help. I don't need their help. Too many strings attached. That rep said he was just here to get the towers online. But mark my word, there's more to it. You know what? I believe you, and you can't count on the Alliance. The Alliance doesn't care about the Terminus colonies. Damn straight. That's what I tried to tell everybody. The Alliance didn't send someone out here because they want to help us. They were after something. Always are. Yeah, you know what? I agree with you. So maybe you can tell us what Kaden was looking for. Tell me more about this Alliance rep. Commander Olenko? Heard he was some kind of hero or something. That made nothing to me, though. Would rather he'd stayed back in council space. Any idea what he was doing on Horizon? Supposed to be helping us get the defense towers up and running. I got the feeling he was here for something else. Spying on us, maybe. I think that this guy's onto something, but I don't necessarily think it was spying. Anyways, we need to use those towers. If you have defenses, we can use them against the collector ship. You'd need to calibrate the targeting system first. It's never worked right. We can figure it out. Just tell us where to find it. Head for the main transmitter on the other side of the colony. Pretty hard to miss. The targeting controls are at the base. You know this colony and the equipment. You better come with us. Not a chance in hell. 
You'd probably just get in the way. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I'll let you out, but I'm locking the door behind you. I'm not taking any chances. Good luck. I think you're gonna need it. Now, we'll actually get Renegade points because uh, I hit the wrong button there. Uh, I was supposed to not tell him to come with us at all. Uh, so that's my bad for telling him to come with us. He'll never come. We do get two Paragon points, 100 credits, because we just got that salvage. We could have got more Paragon points. Anyways, we can get this wall saved for 6,000 credits. And the reason why I said you didn't need to worry about getting any of that ammo or that heavy weapon is because we can actually change our heavy weapons right here, which, as you know, will completely refill them, uh, the ammo of them, when you swap. So now, guess what? Our M920 cane full power and we can use it again we can also pick up that platinum for 2000 2000 platinum oh cannoli anyways now that we're all set we got an m920 cane we are going to get ready for our second to last fight here on horizon and this one is pretty easy it's the next one that's going to absolutely destroy us so we'll go ahead and use this door so as you we come it. as we come out here we're going to see that there's uh it's a tractor. She thinks I'm a tractor. Six. Yeah. We're going to make sure that our incendiary ammo is back on our weapons. And that Garrus is using his sniper rifle because uh, he just, uh, because we used that weapon thing, it actually switched one weapons for us. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to see if we can take out any of these guys before they become a problem, including that guardian. Because if you don't do that, you can actually hear Harbinger say he's going to deal with this personally. We'll go ahead and deal with these husks. Remember, if you knock them off their feet once their armor is gone, it absolutely eliminates them from the fight. So a concussive shot, anything like that is going to absolutely eliminate them. Now, you'll also notice, we'll go ahead and charge this one just to get him away from us. We'll go ahead and move here, and you'll see that there's a Harbinger over there. We're going to wait. We're going to watch out for its singularity because that will actually knock us out of cover. We're going to go ahead and throw this flashbang, which will hit him and hopefully knock him out of the fight entirely. And now he's not going to do anything to us. We can go ahead and charge this assassin and hopefully get rid of it. Whoa. I was like, where did where did you go? Anyways, so we can go ahead and deal with this harbinger now because it's the only enemy that's left. Go ahead and use her biotic warp. And you'll actually notice a new enemy, which I'll go ahead and talk about as soon as we go ahead and deal with this Harbinger, a Scion. A Scion is no joke as an enemy. Uh, absolutely, let's go ahead and throw another flashbang. These guys can do a tremendous amount of damage, and if you're not a, a beautiful Vanguard like we are, uh, it can cause you real issues. But because we are a beautiful Vanguard, you can see it's made out of a bunch of different husks, and we can actually hit its head right here, any armor, anything like that. And it attacks so slowly, that we can actually just kind of charge it every so often and warp it when we can. And then when it hits us, we can go ahead and charge and get full ammo or full shields back. And we can just keep doing this all day. The other thing that it will do from far away, you really don't want these things to get close to you, is uh, it will send a shockwave after you, similar to the Vanguard shockwave that will actually pop you out of cover just like it did there. We're gonna go ahead and charge and go ahead and use her barrier. And then just go ahead and back up you can see it doesn't really do that much damage it's more in the conjunction of other things right if enemies are shooting you and it hits you not only is it doing some damage but it's going to pop you out of cover and you really really don't want to deal with that go ahead and charge melee a couple times and uh actually we're going to switch to our shotgun here as soon as i have enough here go ahead and just sidestep that go ahead and warp them yet again and you'll see, I mean, these things just have a ton of health. Now, if you have a sniper rifle and you're able to get a beautiful headshot on these, they will die incredibly, incredibly quickly. And we'll go ahead and charge one more time and just go ahead and melee it to death. And there you go. We just meleeed a Scion. No big deal. Easy. Easy fight. Garrus is back up. Those are the all of the enemies that we can fight in this area. We're so good. We're so good. But you're seeing Vanguard is just, is just very strong. Uh, unfortunately, not too strong in the next area that we're about to encounter. So we can see that there's some explosive containers in here. And right over on this dead collector, we can go ahead and examine for yet it. another research, which is biotic damage, which is uh, nothing to scoff at, my friends. Something that's going to be very useful uh, throughout the remainder of the game. And then there's actually some power cells over there that we can go ahead and open for 100 credits. I always forget about it because I never need power cells at this point of the game because I just used a weapons locker. So let's go ahead, run over to that chest and grab 100 free credits, which you'll love to see. We are nearing the end of Horizon, my friends. Only a few more 
One more real big battle awaits us, and it is a doozy. One of the hardest battles that we have done so far in Mass Effect. Uh, uh, the entire playlist, Mass Effect 1 and 2 so far. Horizon is considered to be one of the more difficult missions in the entirety of Mass Effect 2, and I would have to agree. On Insanity difficulty, with the upgrades that you have at this it's point in the game... We haven't run across more frozen colonists. The collectors have already loaded them onto their ship. We're running out of time. I was talking, you guys interrupted. Um, <laughs> the, the, because of the lack of upgrades that we have, these, it really is just, uh, it can be a struggle bus. But, like I said, Vanguard with a certain build makes things pretty easy. Now, obviously you're seeing how many things are around here that you can kind of come and fight, and you don't have to sit exactly where we were, but it is easiest, I think, to take them out right where you come in. We can go ahead and access this computer for 3,000 credits by coming all the way up here, and we can use the stairs on the opposite end to go back down to where we have to go, where I want to show you guys a little bit of an exploit. Now, I could have sworn there was one more thing in this room, uh, but maybe I am mistaken. I thought there was something over here that we could get, but it doesn't look like that is the case. I think I'm wrong. Um, I think maybe I was already over here. I thought there was a med kit in this room, but that's okay. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna bypass this door here, giving us access to the final area of Horizon, one big butt arena. This place is huge. And you'll actually see if you are, uh, <laughs> you can, uh, this is kind of cheating, okay? It's And by kind of, I mean it's entirely cheating. But there is a Scion uh, that you can actually attack all the way from over here. And if you warp, you can warp them. If you overload or concussive shot, you can hit them as well. Uh, you can theoretically kill that enemy from over here. And then if you come over to this side, you'll actually notice an arm here that you can attack which is yet another Scion. So there's actually two of them in this area. And you can, you can theoretically, you can kill both of them here. If you do that, no Husk are going to spawn in this next area. I do not recommend it. I think it's cheap. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna make our lives a little bit harder by running this way. And immediately we're gonna charge up here, hit this Husk and destroy it. And then we're going to come and put our allies into cover over here. And now we can start attacking these Scions. These Scions are slow moving, and uh, you should be theoretically okay to take them on. You'll notice that there's Husks in the back that are gonna start moving in. We're gonna go ahead and warp that. Watch out for the Shockwave, because it can actually hit us over here. Flashbang will uh, stop them from casting that. So if you're able to hit them with a Flashbang, go ahead and use that on the Scions. Unfortunately, it looks like, I thought, Mar yeah, Miranda did go down there, which is not good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, unfortunately, we're going to wait for these husks to come up. And we're going to go ahead. Now, you can attack those from far away. But we're going to go ahead and just try to deal with them that way. Watch out for the AOE explosion. Go ahead and concussive shot that. And then Garrus needs to get into cover here. And we'll go ahead and charge. Fortunately, that is going to hit Garrus. It looks like Garrus is probably going to be taken out of this fight pretty early on. We're going to go ahead and charge the Scion yet again, murdering it and back into cover for us. And I think the husk is still alive, so we'll go ahead and uh, finish him off. Where'd he go? I think he's dead. I think actually uh, our boy Garrus actually took him out there. We'll go ahead and grab that uh, Metagel for 100 credits. And unfortunately for us, we have no real way of dealing with this. We're actually gonna send Garrus over there and then hit this uh, yet again. Because as long as, if Garrus is over there, this guy's gonna hit us, but it doesn't matter. Um, I just saw that this has another selection thing on us, but we can't actually do anything with that. Go ahead and charge again, get our shields back, and that's how you deal with Scions. Like I said, if you kill these before you walk into the room, which I don't recommend because it's cheesy, even though, you know, charging something over and over is probably pretty cheesy too. Um, if you do that, you can actually charge them out of that, by the way. Uh, you know what we're gonna do? Eh, it doesn't matter. I was going to say, we'll just throw incendiary, but actually that's going to waste a cooldown of charge, and I don't see a reason for that. There we go. Another Scion down. We're actually going to wait because uh, more enemies are about to come. There actually, oddly enough, was a husk that was waiting for us. And we'll go ahead and charge him. 
sitting him, uh, absolutely just crushing him. And again, this is what I mean is you can kind of, these guys will, will charge you, uh, in attack like that, but because, because of the way that Vanguard works, you can charge out of it and be totally fine. Husks are really, really not a problem. They're, they're a problem for some classes, like maybe an engineer, an infiltrator, um, something that will run out of ammo or, or abilities pretty quickly, it can be a little bit of a problem. So we're going to go ahead and we'll charge this. And again, you could have dealt with these guys from over where we were before, uh, but we'll just go ahead and take them out. And then we're actually going to go back up here, and we have more enemies that are going to come out soon. On my way. We have a nice little break from the Hus. Remember, if you kill those Scions, you don't have to deal with any Hus. So we'll go ahead and grab over here. We have yet another power cells for 100 credits. And that's pretty much all that we can get in this area. But once we use this transmitter to activate the, the guns, we're going to be dealing with a whole other issue. So let's go ahead and hack this. Normandy, do you copy? Joker here. Signal's weak, Commander, but we got you. Good. We need help with the towers. Edie, can you get the colony's defense towers online? Errors in the calibration software are easily rectified, but it will take time to bring the towers to full power. I recommend a defensive posture. I will not be able to mask the increased generator output. Once they know this, the collectors will try to stop it. We'll stop them. Easy enough. Maybe not. Enemy reinforcements closing in. I suggest you ready weapons. So, now that we did that, we're immediately going to go back to where we were in position over here. Put our allies over here, and then we're going to be dealing with a Harbinger that's about to spawn immediately. Unfortunately, Miranda getting taken out before she could even get into cover, which is not what you want to see. Uh, but we're going to be dealing with these enemies, and I don't actually want to use my charge on cooldown just yet. I want to get this off so that we can go ahead and eliminate that Harbinger from this fight. Then that will allow us to actually go ahead, switch to this uh, plasma shotgun. Watch out for the get, uh, the Hus that are coming, which again, we don't care about Hus. They're nothing, they're no big deal. The enemies that are really dangerous here are the Guardians, uh, the Guardians and the Assassins, which we're gonna go ahead and charge and start taking them out as quickly as we can. We're actually going to go ahead and uh, let's just, let's just, there we go. Go ahead and charge this Assassin. And we had a Guardian over here. We're gonna go ahead and charge yet again, get that back. Watch out for the other Assassin. And again, the, the Harbinger is pretty much useless right now. We're gonna go ahead and charge this Guardian. Watch out. It, I, I was gonna say watch out for the Husk, but really just ignore the Husk. We're gonna go ahead and take this guy out. And then we'll go ahead and charge the Harbinger and hopefully take him out before it's even an issue. Watch out for the Husk that's behind us, which again, doesn't matter. Go ahead and charge this one, send them flying. Garrus, what's up, dude? And more reinforcements. Go ahead and charge this Guardian, get him out of there. He's taken out, and we're getting shot at by... Where are they? Go ahead, charge. Miranda's back up, which is nice. Go ahead and eliminate this drone. And we have another one that I saw over here that we can go ahead and take out. And then we're actually going to get our friends into cover on this little area here. On my way. This is going to be in, an incredibly good spot because we're going to be dealing with uh, more Hus that are actually going to be coming out of where we were originally. The, the spot that I said I really liked. They're going to be coming out of this spot over here. And more than that, uh, collectors are going to be coming from the other direction as well. So from where we entered into this room, there's going to be drones over there. And then there's these guys over here. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to switch to this and hopefully just take them out. No problem. And we're so far away from the collectors right now that they're actually not really going to get involved in our husk fight pretty much at all. Let me go ahead and charge that. Absolutely eliminating him. And then can custom shot that one, send him out, and that one's dead. And as you see, we get a harbinger flying in. We're going to go ahead and run over this way, use these trucks as cover. And as soon as this harbinger comes over here, we're going to go ahead and flashbang him eliminating him from the fight entirely, and then we can just deal with his friends as we see fit. Go ahead and charge this Guardian. We're gonna go ahead and warp, which I should be doing so much more often. Watch out for that Assassin, because again, Assassins can be the enemies that absolutely kill you. Sending that Collector flying, and then we're gonna go ahead and stun this, and charge. Perfect. 
more enemies will come in, including in another assassin, which we're going to go ahead and take out. And finally, this collector, which we can just... And then we'll go ahead and charge this Harbinger, get our health back, or our shields back, and then run into cover. Gonna go ahead and flashbang this, just so that it still stays out of the fight. And then we'll go ahead and charge in on this drone as soon as we can. Perfect. And there should be another drone here, which we can go take out. And then finally, we can just go ahead and put our, all, all of our attention on Harbinger here. Hi. But we're not done yet. We're going to go ahead and switch to the M920 Kane because we are about to have one of the hardest fights that we've ever had in Mass Effect 2 against a it's whole bunch of Husk, all made into an amalgamation called a Praetorian. This is no joke. And immediately we are gonna start charging the cane and hopefully hit the most powerful enemy in the entirety of Mass Effect 2 in the head, which we were able to do. Go ahead and hopefully hope that we got a high end of damage on the on our weapon there, which is potentially we got a low end. But we'll see. The cane is inconsistent in the amount of damage that it actually does. So we're going to go ahead and now just start playing do -si do on the Praetorian. It looks like we actually got the low end of the cane, which is unfortunate. But we're going to play do -si do hit this thing with uh, warp whenever we can, and use these. this truck here as cover is going to be incredibly useful for us. We're going to go ahead and hit that. Once its barrier is down, you can start hitting it with other attacks. And we're going to go ahead and warp it. Unfortunately, it looks like Miranda didn't. We need to watch out for those eyes because it absolutely does a tremendous amount of damage. Every single time that the Praetorian does this ground pound attack, it's actually going to recharge its barriers entirely, which is uh, as annoying as it sounds. We're going to go ahead and just keep doing this and then warp its barriers off as much as possible. This is what I mean when I say that you kind of need to bring Miranda because she is incredibly, incredibly useful here. Go ahead and grab that thermal clip as well. Almost putting us down. We're going to go ahead and switch now to the Geth Plasma. And then hopefully... Unfortunately, immediately, as soon as I started attacking it, it went into its uh, barrier... Do, do, do full barrier phase. And because we're using the cane... And you could use the collector. Uh, the collector beam. But because we're using the cane, we're actually not really able to get more ammo for it. It's a one-shot deal no matter what. We're going to go ahead and hopefully take it down here. Bad time to reload, but my hope is that we can take it out. We're going to keep attacking. Concussive if we can. And that should be the end of the Praetorian. There it is. Delicious, baby. Delicious. What do you expect me to do, buddy? That ship is huge. Exactly how are we supposed to catch it? Half the colony's in there. They took Egan and Sam and, and Lilith. Do something. I didn't want it to end this way. I did what I could. More than most, Shepard. Shepard? Wait. I know that name. Sure, I remember you. You're some type of big alliance hero. Commander Shepard, captain of the Normandy, the first human specter, savior of the Citadel. You're in the presence of a legend, Delan, and a ghost. All the good people we lost and you get left behind. Figures. Screw this. I'm done with you Alliance types. I thought you were dead, Commander. We all did. It's been too long, Caden. How have you been? Is that all you have to say? <sighs> you show up after two years and just act like nothing happened. I would have followed you anywhere, Commander. Thinking you were gone. It was like losing a limb. Why didn't you try to contact me? Why didn't you let me know you were alive? 
I was out for two years. You've moved on with your career and your life. Why reopen old wounds? I did move on. At least I thought I did. But now we've got reports about you and Cerberus. Reports? You mean you already knew? Alliance Intel thought Cerberus might be behind the missing human colonies. I got a tip this colony might be the next one to get hit. Anderson stonewalled me. But there were rumors that you weren't dead. That you were working for the enemy. Well, I don't know if I would say that Cerberus is the enemy. Our colonies are disappearing. The Alliance turned its back on them. Cerberus is the only group willing to do something about it. You can't really believe that. We both know what Cerberus is like, what they're capable of. I wanted to believe the rumors that you were alive, but I never expected anything like this. You've turned your back on everything we stood for. Caden, you know me. You know I'd only do this for the right reason. You saw it yourself. The Collectors are targeting human colonies, and they're working with the Reapers. I want to believe you, Shepard. But I don't trust Cerberus. They could be using the threat of a Reaper to manipulate you. What if they're behind it? What if they're working with the Collectors? Typical Alliance attitude. You're so focused on Cerberus that you're blind to the real threat. You're letting how you feel about their history get in the way of the facts. Maybe. Or maybe you feel like you owe Cerberus because they saved you. Maybe you're the one who's not thinking straight. You've changed. But I still know where my loyalties lie. I'm an Alliance soldier. Always will be. I've got to report back to the Citadel. They can decide if they believe your story or not. And, unfortunately, Caden says a lot of things that could be true, and it's something to consider. Shepard needs to keep in mind that Cerberus has done some horrible things, and maybe she started to trust them a little too much. We need people loyal to Shepard. I could use someone like you and my crew, Caden. It'll be just like old times. No, it won't. I'll never work for Cerberus. Goodbye, Shepard. And be careful. Joker, send the shuttle to pick us up. I've had enough of this colony. Not the meeting we were hoping for from our old friend, Caden. But, like I said, Caden brings up some really good points and something that we need to keep in mind. Cerberus cannot be trusted, period. Anyways, we'll level up to level 14, gain two squad points. Collectors escaped with approximately one third of Horizon's population, which, you know, isn't as bad as a whole colony. Front Corporation will funnel supplies, monetary aid to colonial survivors. Front Corporation, I wanna point that out because a lot of people consider Exogeny from the first game, if you might remember, as one of those Cerberus fronts. It makes sense. Collector leader Harbinger demonstrates a personal interest in Shepard, unclear whether his ability to possess his minions, cybernetic override, in indication of hive mind among collectors, or even Reaper technology at work. Salvage teams captured collector bodies for studies. We got the new heavy weapon, the collector particle beam, probably the best weapon in the game against a single target, although I also really like the cane because, hey, it is a mini nuke and it is so cool. Uh, we also got a biotic damage, plus 20% biotic damage to the squad, and we got Shepard gets 10% health for the heavy skin weave. We got 60,000 credits and 2,000 platinum. Not a bad day on Horizon, my friends. Shepard, good work on Horizon. Hopefully the collectors will think twice before attacking another colony. You know, I can't help but feel like I didn't save any of everyone. It's not a victory. We interrupted the Collectors, but they still abducted half the colony. That's better than an entire colony, and more than we've accomplished since the abductions began. The Collectors will be more careful now, but I think we can find another way to lure them in. Wait a minute. Lure them in? I wondered if you had something to do with that attack. Caden said the Alliance got a tip about me and Cerberus. I released a few carefully disguised rumors that you might be alive and working for Cerberus. I see. What were you trying to prove? I suspected the Collectors were looking for you or people connected to you. Now I know for certain. It was a risk, but I couldn't just wait for them to take another colony. You understand? Huh. We have to make sure they don't abduct anyone else. 
I want the Collector stopped for that very reason. That's why we're doing this, Shepard. I'm devoting all resources to finding a way through the Omega-4 relay. We have to hit them where they live. Your team will need to be strong, as will their resolve. There's no looking back. The same goes for you. Can I assume you put your past relationships behind you? None of your damn business. If it affects the mission, better you should leave it behind. Shepard, once you find a way through the Omega-4 relay to the Collector homeworld, there's no guarantee you'll return. To have any hope of surviving, you and your entire team must be fully committed to this. Let me worry about them. You just find us a way to the Collector homeworld. I just want to be upfront about your odds. You'll need everyone at their best. I've forwarded three more dossiers. Keep building your team while I find a way through the relay. And be careful, Shepard. The Collectors will be watching you. As will Cerberus and the Alliance and the entirety of Council Space, it would seem. I guess we're really gonna do it. Hit the Omega-4 relay. Take the fight to the Collectors in person. Looking forward to the action. After seeing what those bastards did on Horizon, though, makes you think. Makes you think that we can do this. Not only can we do this, we have to do this. They're powerful, but we've got a few tricks for them. If anyone can stop them, we can. No argument there, Commander. Horizon just made it hit home. What we're doing, what we're up against. Gonna go take care of a little unfinished business. I imagine everyone else is, too. Getting some closure, you know? Indeed, I do. And with that, the end of Act 1 of Mass Effect 2 and the beginning of Act 2. The loyalty missions and three more people to recruit to our team, including Thane Krios, uh, Samara, and Ikvorian is going to be on our team. But because we just did a mission, there are things that we can do, like talk to Jacob for a loyalty mission. And now we can start doing the rest of our squad's loyalty missions. We're not going to do that right now because we have other things to do. We're going to go ahead and we can check and see what messages we have. Morlin looks like he's actually sent us some spam about maybe increasing some of our sexual um, stuff. Uh, so thanks, Morlan, from the shop over on the Citadel that we met in Mass Effect 1. Really appreciate that you have my damn number, you jerk. We also got a uh, message here from Han Olar, who you may remember from Novaria. At peak 15, he was the Volus there that was having some trauma issues. He says that he's glad we're alive. He's in therapy. He, he, he heard that we killed Venezia, another woman I helped killed if my information did any good. So he's having a lot of trouble with the fact that maybe he's responsible for some of the murders that happened on peak 15. And as he proceeds, he gets a little bit more and more dark. Maybe I'm a martyr and this is an ugly hallucination before a glorious afterlife. But if I'm not, then thank you. Very interesting. We also get another message from one that's uh, a little scary. Somebody, apparently, Billy, that was on Purgatory from the last episode, uh, escaped, and now he's gonna carve Shepard's name instead of his into his next victims as thanks. We also get a message from Robin Reeve. The soldier, the Alliance soldier gave this con con contact information. This soldier is from Horizon, the colony that we just left who says that uh, they are hoping that we can help them find out what's happening and hopefully we can stop the collectors because they took uh, his son and his brother or her son and her brother. The Alliance isn't doing anything. And we also get some stuff that tells us that Liara Tassoni is looking for the Shadow Broker and we, my friends, might see a little bit of Liara in the next episode. If we go ahead and talk to Kelly, we have some more things that happen now that we've saw completed the, reports the on horizon. horizon. Commander, what you did was amazing. The report mentioned that Caden Alenko was there. How did that go? Uh, it went it was well. good to see him. Do you have strong feelings for him? That's history. What we had together is in the past now. I'm sorry. Parting ways with someone so close is never easy. I appreciate that, but I'll be okay. Anyway, how may I help you, Commander? Is there anything I should know? Operative Lawson would like to see you at her station on the crew deck. Operative Taylor would like to see you over in the armory. 
two Anything loyalty happened? missions that That'll we can now get and tackle happened. right away if we so choose. But we're not going to do those just yet because we have other people on the Normandy that we need to go speak to. And the first of those, of course, is going to be Joker, who probably has something to say about Caden. Hey, Commander. It's uh, pretty crazy the people you can run into out here, huh? I mean, it was probably a setup or something, but it was still good to see Caden, Staff Commander Alenko, wasn't it? He moved on. I can't blame him. He was frontline with you against a Reaper, and I'm the one who gets roped back into saving the galaxy? Did someone switch our files? You're the force that pulls it all together, Joker. Yeah, it sucks. I'll give you that. Dude, I love you. I assume everything's Good for now. Up. See you, Commander. And that's everything that we could get from Joker now. And you know what? Shepard's right. Joker is the force that keeps everybody together, and for good reason. So we're going to continue on, and there are lo more loyalty missions that will stop, start popping up and we'll start seeing. Which is great, because this is the time to do as many as possible. So we're going to go ahead and we did get some upgrades. We're going to go ahead and research our biotic upgrade, 1000 element zero, which also allows us to do the biotic duration upgrade, 20% biotic power, uh, power duration. And uh, I think that's it for those. But we also got the heavy skin weave, which we can go ahead and do that for 2500. And we also have the power now to actually... Uh, redo all of our points for Shepard. We will have the ability to do this later on, uh, but for right now, we we could do this and, and change any of our powers and potentially not a bad thing to do uh, if you've ruined your powers at all, like putting points into Shockwave, which is not necessarily something you should do ever. But let's go ahead and talk to Morden, see if he has anything for us. He did come in clutch with that Seeker Swarm technology. Shepard, how can I help? Have you got a minute to talk? Perhaps later. Trying to determine how scale itch got onto Normandy. Sexually transmitted disease only carried by Varen. Implications unpleasant. Anything else? I'll let you work. We'll be here if you need it. I hope he finds out how that happens. Let's see if Jack has anything to say to us down in the cargo hold area here. Whatever you want to call this. This, I don't know, this, this pit that she's in. Hey, Jack. What's up with you? Hey. Tell me about you, Jack. What are you up to? Still checking out your ship. Wouldn't mind putting her through her paces when you're not around. Uh, maybe later. I doubt Joker would appreciate that. At least not while we're working. Relax. Joyriding doesn't have the thrill it used to. Besides, if I wanted it, I'd take it. That's so. Uh, I've been around. Ran with gangs, wiped out some gangs, joined a cult. Kept the haircut. I learned how to survive and not be a victim. Tell me about this cult. It's hard to imagine you in a cult. That usually involves a lot of rules. I was looking for answers. Drugs and sex and going to a better place. A better place, right. It was all about money. They wanted to take a colony, shake the suckers down to fund their spread, and guess who was their ace in the hole? They were just like the rest give one shit about me. What'd you do when you found out? What do you think? You must have met some good people, too. Everybody wants something, and because of that, everything is fair game. Murder, assault, kidnapping, drugs, stealing, arson. Done it all, and that's the boring shit. Piracy, theft of military craft, destruction of a space station, and vandalism. That was a good one. I'm sorry, did you say... Did you say vandalism? I'm surprised you'd even mention vandalism in that bunch. That's what the Hanar call it when you crash that space station I mentioned into one of their moons and make a new crater. They really liked that moon. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the, the problems you've caused for the galaxy. You were a pirate too? Ties in with the kidnapping. If you hijack a passenger ship and don't kill everyone, anyway. Good lesson. Simpler to just kill them all. A space station? You're pushing what I can believe. Ain't saying it was easy. Not everything is spur of the moment. Sometimes you gotta work to give people what they deserve. Had some people I hung with for a while. Outlaw colony. Felt like they were like me. Guess that made us a nice target. Turians think they know something about a scorched earth response. Fuck them. And the theft of that, theft of that military craft? The military's a hard target. Bet that made you some friends. Shouldn't have left the thing unlocked. Besides, parades are boring. I helped. 
And you regret none of that? Do you ever wonder if you could have done things differently? No. Shouldn't you? There's no reason I should be alive, but I am. You know why? Instinct. It's worked for me so far, and I'm not gonna change. Hey, Shepard. No one's ever asked me about this shit. It's strange to talk about. So fuck you. And thanks for asking. Hey, Jack. You want a hug? Hey. Tell me about you, Jack. I'm done talking. I should go. Yep. I don't think I don't think Jack wants a hug. But we're not going to talk to Jacob or Miranda yet because we're not going to pick up their loyalty missions. And Garrus won't say anything to us. He just wants to say, can I wait a minute? I need to calibrate. And it's like, bro, dude, come on. You know what I mean? And I don't believe. I've got green across the board. The forward tanks are buoyant and elevated. Are you talking about the Normandy or Miranda? I'm talking about the one that's covered and protected, not bouncing in the breeze. I don't know. Operative Lawson's uniform is very official. It always makes me stand at attention. Holy. You're such a dog. You guys are going to get in trouble. Miranda's going to murder you both. And honestly, I wouldn't blame her. I'd be like, oh, shucks. Well, I didn't do it. So we're going to head up to the crew deck and see if in the crew quarters our little story has anything What's to do. Wrong? I lost contact with New Camp. Might be the collectors. Did your family get out of there? I don't know. There's no communications yet. I'm sure they're safe. Y you'll see. I hope they are. I really do. And my friends, that is everything that we can do in today's episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and look at where we're at now. Level 14, six points that we're just sitting on that we're not going to use until we get a certain certain ability. Not that it matters because we can retrain it, but honestly, heavy charge champion uh, is all you need to win at this game. That's it. That's all you need. Uh, but we're going to get a really good bonus power later on that's going to help us kick just a little bit more. But thank you guys so much for watching. The next episode is a big one. We're going to a whole new area, a place that we've never been to before in one of my favorite places in all of Mass Effect 2. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, uh, never give up, never surrender to the collectors. And also a huge shout out to those of you on patreon.com slash missile online and to those of you watching in the premieres. I love you. Bye, everyone.